Hello. I'm sitting in the wrong section of the room. I'm your evergreen host, Ben. We're going to go over some stuff and a little help today. We're doing a new show um, to kind of integrate into Small Window. We're ramping that up, and I wanted to show you guys um, some of the music production for it. I get to do some music finally on stream. That's fun. Um, but we did, if you kind of caught one of our, one of our, it wasn't really a test. It was like this accidental stream last week kind of thing. Um, it was a complete, complete misstep. Um, <laughs> that was fine. You, you might have caught or heard a couple of things from rehearsal and saw a bunch of strange people, but you have not seen the show yet because it's just getting ready to go. Um, but thank you all very much for the auto hosts and for the presence and all that kind of stuff. It's fantastic to see you here. Welcome back to Mint Potion. This is the long lost return for of a little help. Um, where we actually started the series like going for or going through like different uh how you say different techniques, how to use Ableton, how to use these audio tools and software and stuff like that. And I don't know who still needs a little help with these things, but we're of course we're here for you. Um, I guess I should like, I don't know, we did tweet out a thing. I'm going to send out some other kind of update. Is there anything I really need to do? Thank you so much for supporting us. Our patrons on Discord, our bards on Discord, our people. And of course our chat, who's also hanging out here. I need to kind of rearrange my windows a bit so I can see everything. So I don't miss you maybe split into that thing. Sorry, this windowing on this computer is, you know, bad. <clears throat> All right. So I can kind of see chat. That's, thanks. Thank you. That's, <laughs> that was a disaster. There we go. Slightly better. Not good. I can't even see crap in here. All right. Hello, hello. So hopefully we have sound. And also rhythm, which I may or may not have, but hey, whatever. So we're doing a cover of a Paul Simon song. And it's kind of in the, uh, we've been doing like a, like a neo soul, kind of like a funk, a funky thing with it. Um, and I did not want to do this at the beginning. Not good. What's not good, DJ Halo? So, uh, I can't play the original song, I don't think. That's cool. Uh, I might want to map. What does this button do? Nothing? Everything? All right. Real quickly, let's map a couple of transport buttons. I'm going to mess with my mappings here. So, in live, I press uh, command M. And I just want my record button to be mapped. Uh, it's not giving me any feedback. Dope. And we'll use the existing keyboard controls. I just have to reach over the things in front of me. We're not set up for music today. Of course not. Or, I'm kind of against this thing altogether. Like this whole, it's kind of a nightmare. We'll get it out when we need it. For now, we'll do the other part. So the core kind of loop of the song, uh, let me play, let me play for you, uh, just like this beat that we're going to emulate and then we're going to make better or I don't know, funkier. It's kind of hard to get funkier than the song. That's one of the challenging things about the show. Uh, so if you don't know who Paul Simon is. This is the song that you will definitely know of his. If not from Still Crazy After All These Years. Need about five seconds. If it's an advertisement, you won't know about it. Because I'm not about to spring for you two bread. Maybe not. I know people who do, though. I said not good. <laughs> yeah, here's the beat. Right. So 
they're adding layers over kind of this tambourine that's holding it down. Um, and I think, let me just check the intro again. I don't know if there is like a weird kind of graceful count in. I think it just starts on one. They're not gonna, well, it's not gonna work if it's muted. Yeah. Sweet. So, I have something to hold me down here, which is that tambourine on the end of everything. I'm gonna toggle on looping. And already it sounds like kinda thick, which is a little too high for my taste. Um, some people make beats by using MIDI across the board and sample across the board. We're just gonna mix, we're gonna do everything we can. So I'm gonna consolidate these guys so that I can tune them all together and change their trans through the transient volume of bits. I like it. Nah, it's gotta be higher. Sweet. And so I have this drum kit. This is my my pro's tip of the evening: is if you do not have Drumica, get it. It's this uh, Sennheiser like microphone. Um, it's like a catalog, basically, where they want you to look at their mics and like, ooh, yeah, this is what, you know, this overhead mic can do this and these kicks can do that. But it comes with like 500 megabytes of just like multi-sample drum kit that are really, really good. Full articulation, like full GM articulation. Um, and then some. So you got all of your little flams and all of that kind of stuff. I'm going to create, let's see, I'm going to make two of these because that's kind of what I hear. Uh, select all loop that region and then I'm gonna fill up this region with MIDI. Control Shift M. Do this go in here. Um so I'm not using a keyboard right now. I had one a second ago but I'm moving it to the side. We're gonna use this little guy to preview all of our little dudes here. I know that the kick drum is gonna start down here at C one right um, and that's really much the beginning of that beat. I think it's at the beginning of both bars. <sighs> and then up here, a couple octaves, you'll find like snare, right? Uh, snare articulation. So there's this kind of light roll, tight flam, like a wider flam. <clears throat> and the normal snare stuff is all close to here. So clap. Like all of that. So they usually group these in such a way that you can actually play them with the keyboard. You know, like uh, the toms are next to each other. There are two kicks next to each other. Um, but all of the toms are white keys next to each other. And they usually repeat. Um, Alright, so first thing is this. Just kind of for memory. Because I would normally do like... Kind of thing for the track we did last week. I like leaned really heavily on this thing, right? This kind of what's it called? Click this rim shot. Do so. We use a little bit of really basic music theory to kind of get our way through this, starting with like timing, not even really considering the notes. Um, all right. And then where's my kind of snare stuff? Uh, let's see, up here it's gonna be in the middle of this. I guess that's the only obnoxious thing about this preview button or this, you know, this here the cue. You also likewise play it by clicking up here. We have our virtual keyboard. You can enable and disable by command or control shift K. So I can get kind of all the way up there. Uh, so one and do 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 
Then I want a clean, like, snare hit after to kind of close off that. Uh, and then the second bar has this hi-hat kind of filling it up, which is about there. If you want to quickly move, like, I have this hit, it's very, very small, we're working at a 30 second note for no reason. But if I select this region, you can see um, this yellow area opening up, and that'll include the copying of the timing. So if I just move this guy and I wanted to duplicate that across, we'll get like this really tight, you know, 30 second note repeating. But if I select this whole range, then I can repeat it at the beginning of, you know, er wherever I need it. Um, let's see. I think that's there. Do -do -do. And then, let's see, another big part of this is the toms. So one and two and three and four. It's like a flam on the toms. So do da do da do da boom. This is at the E. If we like divide this down to 16th notes, that's where you think of. I don't know what the subdivisions are at 30 second notes, but each of these is one E and a. Right? So E and in the middle. And a. Is that second or penultimate 16th note? Somebody's talking. Room. Did it? Right. And then this pretty much repeats all of our weird articulation. So same thing, keeping track of timing. We'll build up a groove very quickly. Uh, one more thing. One more thing. How are you doing, chat? Where is... Let's see. Let's see what you got to say for me. Okay. And that's really the only thing that makes using a MIDI controller a lot faster is you get your articulation down in one hit. Jake the laser cake for president. Oh, I'm good. Ignore the O. Yeah, just call him Tomo. Whoever you happen to be. My day's been doing good. We need a guest jar, Jake the laser cake. I hear Jake is awake and on his way. Uh, and I want you... Do, 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 do. Okay. These are very quiet. Also, that's probably the wrong. Yeah, there we go. Do, do. can select this set here in my velocity editor. When I hit B to go into paint mode, I'll only affect those selected notes, which is pretty convenient. Cool. 
Cuckoo. This is not loud enough. Is there like a, is that Robbie watching the stream or is something really, really low out there? Cool. Oh, the only thing I don't like about this is my keyboard shortcuts get kind of taken out. My keyboard shortcuts I must switch between to get stop. Okay, this rings a bit more. Da -ding. One. All right. I'll move this guy over. And just add that roll at the beginning which is here I think. too high yep one two three four four and uh Who is that, Robbie? See what I mean by that curtain thing? I think there's another little layer of grace notes in here as well. So one more time. So do 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 do. Uh, Yeah. All right. Let's run this through real quick. All right, and then I need something else. Velocity to make a difference. MIDI programming from scratch. This is my Let's Play of Paul Simon. Hey Mouse, where are you at? Hmm? Right. So it doesn't quite pick up as fast. to do copy your timing here
Give me a little bit more variation here, but still really well. Don't hate it. All right. What is this called? Let's call this US for two ways. So it's important, especially if you're programming MIDI, I mean, it's kind of easier that way. Even if you're recording MIDI, you really want to, um, you want to start with everything on the grid or as close to it as possible. Otherwise, the grooves that you implement following don't make any sense. All right, <clears throat> um, because it uses the strict quantized information um, in order to shift everything over. So if I do browse my groove library, and I want something that's going to be like, usually for a soul kind of thing, you'll use like a MVC or a 1200 at like a mid swing. It's mm, not bad. And you can make all of these yourself. And there are many ways to do this. This is straight, so it's not going to really give us any kind of feel. Um, well, let's put this on here real quick and kind of talk about how much we can quantize it. So now it's not using any timing. I do like how it does sparkle more velocity, more velocity in. The bass is fine. I can start to hear details that I want back. Like this is louder. Not you. up with you hey that sounds pretty good all right so as a base that's fine I'll definitely go through and adjust it later um, because there are a couple of different grooves in this there's so this kind of there's this kind of weird drum line ish kind of sounds and then further down the song like there's the bridge uh, or the chorus that has a particular um, Straight, more straight kind of rock. Let's see. Right. So it's a little bit more sparse. There isn't as much uh, like flutter, or, um, as much grace in like the <clears throat> what's it called? In that kind of left hand like snare articulation. We don't have to put much as much detail into that. Where is my sinking mouse? And. I don't know, maybe I'll move it out. I haven't really figured out what I want to do. But same kind of thing. We'll create a MIDI clip. And the hi-hat still holds that, or the hi-hat, the tambourine still holds that down. Let's slew here. It still isn't funky enough. I really want something that's like, like, I didn't want to copy this song, and that's kind of why I'm dealing with the latency right now. But. Hmm. I don't know. What are my dudes? Oh, God. Ben's using Ableton. Now I can backseat produce the whole evening. Thank you, Team Ad 40. What's up? Hey, it's Deep Power. BRB. Jake the scissor cake. Oh, I see, I see. All right. 
All right, chat. If I ever, if you ever have to bear witness to the top of my skull, it's because I'm looking at you closely and focusing on this large screen. So I have a um, chart here, the chord progression for this song. Uh, let's see. I want to say here, maybe. Nope. In other thing, yes. In other thing. Uh, let's see. Holy crap! I can hear myself. That's a disaster. Nope. Let's not do that. So here, in Chrome, we can look at. I think this is even the Paul Simon website. I have no idea. Um, but you can kind of look at a chord chart. Um which is useful for people who are familiar with it. Um, and I would, is this still plugged in? Oh, cool. So what do we have, like E minor? Whoa, that's not a piano. <laughs> this is. All right. Um, blah, 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 blah. D6. C major 7. Let's see. And it's like, how do I root? How do I do this without like, like, is it cool to just be like, all right, so here's how this baseline goes, right? Right. Oh, do I just play the roots down? Because I'm definitely going to switch out that for this kind of synth bass thing I've been doing. Alright, so let's get you the heck out of the way for a minute. And... I'm trying to think. Mm -mm. I need about... I need a bunch of you. Another two at the beginning. And doing this from memory is harder than it looks. Yes, and then what? Okay. One more time, mouse. Screen's a bit big. My mouse is a bit bigger. I want you. That's what I've been using for bass this month. Perfect. <laughs> Yeah. I don't think that's good television. Top secret lean around the keyboard technique. That's stupid. <laughs> All right. It's not me. Yes, it is. All right. I want the orchestral. I don't want the whole section, I just want this guy. And similar type of thing. Be sure to enable. One, two. What? 
This is only too violent. That doesn't do anything for me. Change my loop region. I want. I want the counterpoint that's coming out of this guitar here as well. Mm -hmm. Mm, I see. Now we have real chords. Press, I think, Alt to skip from note to note. How do I do this? Oh, no, that's not the button I want. Oh, wait, that was Melodyne. That says that. Uh, Uh, Iman over G. So here's your G that's holding down your first note, yes, or your first chord. And above that, we have to put down an E minor. No problem. <clears throat> Same thing, we'll preview this. E. Minor. But it's not very graceful. This is why. Alright. E minor over G. D6. So if this is two bars, or two beats, one, two. D. D. Ding. I need. Actually, that's pretty, pretty close. I need to feel it. Oh, too far. Yeah. What else you got? C major 7? That's an easy one. B7. Mm, what is minus nine going to be? Is that like a diminished nine? Okay. This note does not move. I guess that's the style, the sign of... Oh, and that's where that comes from. Here's the diminished nine sound. So, music theory. We're going to talk about it. Awesome. We're working our way there. So that's how I'm kind of, you know, getting the information from that chart, right, and filling out this thing. Um, because uh, that's going to be what the people who sing it tomorrow morning are going to be kind of familiar with. If you get too crazy, they're going to go, I mean, that's kind of like the song, you know. If it doesn't represent it, then they're going to weird um but if b over this chord is major seven do, 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 then let's do b seven or uh, yes nine over b seven so here this kind of continues down this is our root that we're using to inform the chord and we're going to arpeggiate up to it's normal seven. Uh, mm -hmm. Nice, so I have to play it. D 
do, 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 do. So that's the seven. And so then this is an octave, V to V, right? So that would be eight. The next note in the scale is a whole step up. Um, but it is minor or diminished. It's, I think that is how we play this. And let's check our source. This is actually a neat exercise. Yeah. So that note right there, the C on top, that is where that character comes from. Pretty cool stuff. A little slow and practical, but I kind of, I'm starting to feel a little bit better about this. How are you guys doing, chat? I don't know. I'm kind of like flipping between a bunch of screens so I can only kind of half see you. Yes, it worked. Tomoki has finally upgraded to regular Tomo with pink colors. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, so yeah, let me know if you have any questions about, we're basically going over timing and tones. Um, a lot of pop songs, fortunately, repeat really, really, really frequently. So we only really have to go, you know, so far through, um, our song up here, like before this section, the verse repeats here. And also a lot of these chords are reusable. And there's kind of this vamp at the end of the verse, A minor to E, or E, to, e minor to A minor. Um, so, yeah, but feel free to ask questions. I'm not, this isn't like a super formal thing. I can totally, I can totally bring that up in chat. There are only a few people. It's just us, it's just us folks. All right, so next keyword, ring, ring. Oh, I see. So this one is going to let up before the end of this bar. What is that noise? Right? Is that? I have no idea. If anyone on stream can figure out what that noise is, please let me know. You can't? Okay. Do you, what is that? Do you know? It's like a... <laughs> Challenge Jake. <laughs> Fucking Preston. Oh, God. Yeah, um... All right, we should challenge Jake to make a very stereotypical pop song. I think also, uh, <laughs> oh goodness, be augmented, be plus. Is there? I wonder. What is that site? Uh, people in people in chat who are also in our disc our, our discord. Uh, you mentioned like an ear training site. I think it was uh, Team Ad who mentioned this. I kind of want to use it as a reference, just to talk about like the way that people write these symbols. Um, Mm -hmm. E minor, D sharp. I guess O seven is going to be. That'll have to be diminished. That's the only way that that makes sense. So same thing. Starting with E. If you think about um, let's see. It's kind of hard to put into. Like how do I how do I express this in like a straightforward way? Without like kind of walking through all the notes, right? So E major. Right. And we're gonna move one of these down for our minor chord. 
Would you close the door? Amazing. <laughs> it's like the worst euphemism of all time. <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm a... No? That's good. Um, You know what's funny is I would check my bag. Sorry, dude. <clears throat> Check my bag. G major nine with a raised fifth. D sharp seven diminished. Do, 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 do. This is I don't know, I guess the bad the guide to how to do a bad cover, <laughs> if that. Yeah. Um because I would really want to take the mood out of it, but I don't know the song by heart. Like, I was able to do the other one very quickly. This one is like, I don't know. Mm -mm. D. So now this voice seems to be leading down. D sharp, what? Hmm. Right, here it's so much bouncing around. I don't think I don't think that's a good stream. I don't know. Oh, that's where that's coming from. That's held down by the bass. Right? F sharp. This is that chord, G major 7 on. Not seven. Next one, nine. This one. Where are you here? Wow, that like unnatural. I have that unnatural feeling of like not. <laughs> I feel unnaturally 
I, don't know, I feel like I need to not fuck up, <laughs> which is like the thing that we do all the time around here. We're just like, oh, there's so much pressure on the music side of this like studio that I'm just like, oh crap, don't fuck up. But don't worry about it, guys. I should be reminding myself what we try to remind everybody who like comes around. Fuck up all the time. This don't fuck up bullshit doesn't help anybody. And so let's see what's wrong, because there's definitely not enough information really here. Yeah. Because this is already being held down by the bass. This G. Uh... I think, right, on the fourth measure here. Yeah. Sweet. It's no dynamics yet, nothing interesting yet. Oh, but we can do, do you use like MIDI effects to humanize and all that stuff? All right. Let's see. That's out of the key. You don't really see that note anywhere else here. And what is that supposed to be? G major nine. So G G. That's loud. Should be here. Hmm. And then this is the augmented five, D sharp, and I need a nine as well. So this is eight. We could also move this up to A, like instead. Kind of works. That leads better. Mm -hmm. There's one more chord missing. D sharp. Diminished seven. Mm -hmm. There we go. This makes more sense to me. There's so much of this. I think that's because it's the first note of what the spoken song is. Or, anyway. And so this... Do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. E minor. Are we kind of going in reverse? Okay. What the? C major, then this repeats V7 and V7. What? 
And then the vamp. Which is two bars. Ooh, yeah. Duplicate nothing. <laughs> Real quick. <laughs> Absolutely. Get too cozy. Tomoki, get clean. Thanks for the compliments and the, I don't know, attention, the patience. Thanks for hanging out. I'm a little nervous. I usually get to make music without the uh, company of you guys. But I should do it more, yeah? Don't, sit, don't comment on that. <laughs> uh, e minor, A7, E minor. Hey. Here's a chord we know. That's not it. Nah, I just pasted it in. <laughs> I just wanted to have some notes. Uh, one, two. Hold on. Bum, bum, bum. This is long, and that repeats. And then that's our whole verse. So now we have that done. Dope. Um, let's move this guy down a little bit more. Not sure what I want to do with that other guy. Hmm. I've never done that. I've never done a cover like this before. <laughs> I'm excited. This could either be really, really crap, or less than really, really crap. Uh, does this repeat? No, just the vamp. Okay. And then let me check the reference again. The risk of being cruel, there must be fifty ways to leave your lover. Two, three, four. Fifty ways to leave your lover. That does repeat. Just slip out. Oh, before the freaking. Hold on, hold on. She said it. Yes. You love her. I'd like to help. Yes. All right. So that means that this will repeat once. With my whatever stupid ability to check that. This repeats once, this happens, and then this happens. Our little bridge. And this can be a little bit funkier, but that'll work. Although, I think the intro is a bit off. Probably repeat twice. We can insert some time here to fix that. We can create an in. Is it? You can delete time. I also want to insert time. Is that the opposite keystroke? Because I just know Control Shift Escape or Control Shift Delete. What is it called? If I wanted to get rid of this space, right? Can I undo whatever that was? Delete time. Where is delete time? <laughs> like, no, you can't add time, dude. Just move the damn track. I know this isn't true. I know you can add time. I can't remember what it's called. <laughs> All right. So, let's do it the long way. Hey, that's Jake. You know, we're just doing a cover. Yeah. A little bit. How you doing? Nice. <laughs> what, it's four in the afternoon? 
Really? Already? Real fast? Real fast. Real slow night. We were here pretty late. Gotta say. All right. There's really no reason to even have a looping region at this point. But a minute of music in 15 minutes, uh, an hour. That's about right for a quack fest. It's not original by any means. <laughs> but it's a lot of fun. Hello, K to the K. To the K. How are you guys doing? I'm trying to like hide my member list so I can see what's going on. Look at my sprite-like logo. It's like uh, very fitting of the time. The song was written in the 70s. Um, this logo looked like it was printed on a Who reunion tour t-shirt. <laughs> it's just it's going to be real there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not not weird looking at all. Some MIDI effects in there. Got that thing to like mess up a bit. straight this whole track is <laughs> it's just because it doesn't like doesn't lean and that's because of really like even the swing is kind of off what i want is uh did we talk about how to how to get like that feel at all so w normally what i'll do and i think you can warp midi now which is wicked um yeah, they have warp points. You can, like, stretch it. But how do I do that? Can I do that just over, like, a smaller section? Yeah. <clears throat> Maybe that's the way to do it. Because you want, basically, this, like, you want 2 and 4 to be nailed down, right? And then you want to kind of, like, nudge your other stuff, like, forward. It's kind of a weird technique, but that like anticipation and having that space makes it a little, I don't know, a little bit more live, a little funkier. Also playing it, huh? Oh, to warp MIDI? Yeah. So the same the way that we like timed, um, like we d duplicated time region, right? Where I want like, you know, that. But now I can kind of stretch that whole suit. Yeah, that's a that's a new feature. <laughs> uh, let's see. But yeah, your kick is kind of going to be that dead giveaway because the kick doesn't have to, like the kick has to live on one. But even here, it's like it's kind of early. I like that. And that's kind of. I don't know, where's our. Did I get rid of that groove thing already? Uh, I've got no patience. Let's get the... Faster. Not that fast. Alright, that'll, that'll probably work. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Alright. So I have a groove on one and not on the other. Let's go actually remove this groove. Or maybe we'll make one. Let me think about that. Loop this guy over here. That 64th note ish kind of feel. Uh, 
What are they talking about? I don't know. All right. They sound, they sound pretty intense. Oh, speaking of other weird things you can do with MIDI. Let's say I want this to continue throughout the whole like section, but also keep growing. The same way that we kind of isolated that, like that set, you can, you can draw a line. Um, I'm trying to remember like, do I press alt? Oh man, I need a reference for that. Huh? The I think that's the air conditioner, actually. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad, yo. How do you give me some notes real quick, guy? There we go. That's what I wanted to do. So when you're holding, like I wanted to do it on a specific set. If you hold command or control and draw, it'll, yeah, with that, when you're not in, in like the brush mode. Because what I wanted to do was kind of continue where this velocity line, like it's really hard to see, maybe with this color scheme, but like where this one kind of picks up and keeps getting higher or whatever, like I had like some variance in there. Like, really, you could just take the whole set and then get a little bit like that and make them all just, right? Um, so, yeah, holding control or command, I guess in our case, command, will give you that kind of direct, linear, like, gradient. That baseline sucks. All right. It's a little bit drastic, but totally works. <laughs> This is how you make drums sound live without having a controller. A lot of people ask whether, you know, what kind of controller you should use and stuff like that. And when I started out doing this series last year, this time last year, um, I put a lot of emphasis on editing without a keyboard. And so now I feel like that's home base <laughs> for a lot of stuff. But I've been playing a lot more, so it's a little easier. Um, speaking of which... Let's get that little bit of velocity. So there's like a velocity compressor, right? Is kind of what this thing is, right? And it changes the response area. If I want to have it, you know, always kind of be a minimum, the max that I'll allow out. Like I don't really want to ever blow out, you know, this channel. And then anything that comes through, you can kind of adjust the curve of, you know, what that what that landing point is for that video. And of course, a field of accuracy. And it should do both. You could do random or relative velocity. I think I might just want to do relative velocity. So it makes adjustments without really changing what we put in there. You could also do the same thing with timing. I think that's this guy. But... Of course, it doesn't sound right because we don't have our lovely hi-hat or tambourine. Got to have a tambourine. I wonder what else is... Do you think we're missing anything in that, like, texture-wise? Yeah. Hmm. 
Hmm. It seems so like, like Hallmark, like sentimental, like bad elevator music. It's totally, you know what I mean? Like this, this totally needs like a, like a cello or some shit in there. Sounds like I'm adjusting my volume back and forth. There's <laughs> This is great. I'm sorry. I have to be self-deprecating. If you were here uh, last weekend, you were jamming, and I was just like, ah, man. Everyone's like, that was kind of good. That was fun. And I go, yeah, until they come after us with a flamethrower. Like, that's the, that's the first rational thing that would happen. You know, when a bunch of people are playing music in the street or something like that. Like, oh, get the flamethrower. That's... You know, it's very, uh, I don't know. I guess it's just to balance the support that I got growing up and, you know, people being supportive. <laughs> what is your, how dare you? <laughs> Lousy instrument. Sounds good. I've been using the cheapest, cheapest sounds. Love it. Ooh. Yeah, I'm not really committed to it anyway. <laughs> not really committed to it. I just... Because I tried playing like this, but I keep, like, having to do the reach. Why is it all these, like... I mean, I don't know if that's the case today. I haven't picked up a record in a couple of years, but, like... Why is it that, like, all of these record covers of the 70s are, like, totally normal people with their, you know, with a strange focus on their tight jeans? Explain that to me. You guys, you just had to be there. Is there any articulation on this thing? Nope. channel the hat wearing guy I did this wrong I think I had it copied right before and I moved a couple of those weird drum roll type things around not that it has to be perfectly accurate but I keep I keep getting in like so yeah, that doesn't come into the second half. Barra boo check a do check a do. Yeah. Also, this like. There we go. Do it. Yeah. What is this? What are you? Do do do. One and uh, yeah, copy, not move. Yeah, important. Yeah, it's just late. Do 
three armed drummers, I guess not allowed. That's a good rule. <laughs> <laughs> Is there another articulation that's just a hit? That's not a roll? Right there. Yeah. Sweet. Kind of like how the other ones aren't really instanced. Uh, like this one seems right, no? It should all be the same. But... Oh. I'll get them right and manipulate them later, right? Like, make them unique and do their own thing. Some reverb in here. Stopping? Not, not this thing? Not what I wanted to do. I like that. And really what we're doing is pretty much copying that at the end of the thing. Right. This is the last beat. Yeah. Just I don't know, put a few in somewhere. <laughs> ah, that that seems like a good idea. <laughs> anyway, let's do the next part. It's a little bit easier. Um, so I think it's 16 bars for our chorus. Or eight? No, it could be 16. These division lines, I can't tell whether I like or hate because they keep like subdividing and shit. <laughs> I think. <laughs> oh, these guys. I have a keyboard shortcut for fixing that that I have just like when I do this kind of thing. And I don't I don't want that. I press uh, F. Yeah. Well, it's uh it's not normally F, but it's this key right here. Uh if I go to my help guy on the top next to like your linking, is re enable and go back to automation. Um and I think that has a bit to do with they added so much more stuff to the software to like accommodate their 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 control surface to push um like this record new session or record as new button is kind of strange um there's so there's a record button right across the top let me make this a little bit bigger <sighs> la, 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 la. look feel look feel feel look feel there we go brightness oh yeah that's exactly what i'm looking for now so right here across the top in our transport. So there's record, but then there's record new. Session record button. Prepare scene for new recording. Like, very, very, very Ableton push specific. Just like being able to record kind of out to this view while tracking. It's kind of neat. That's just a thing they added, dude. I have no idea why. I mean, I have a theory. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Move over just a bit. Our 
bright. You're empty. Let's make you like a different color so I know you're hot or something like that. Something like that. You just slip out out the bag, Jack. Make a new play. Do could do, do could do. Mm hmm Just make a new plan. It's very quiet. There it is. Who is? Oh, it's you. Oh, it's you. What's up? Yeah. Why? Sounds like there's a there's a misunderstanding. Sounds like there's a, a, a misunderstanding between you and machine. Gotcha. Can I do that? Yeah. They're they're talking. Yeah. Huh. I mean the whole thing. What's wrong? Huh? Oh, I just messed around. Making this cover, man. It's uh, a weird endeavor. Cause I never just like program in MIDI like this. It's fun. Yeah, pretty much. A little understated. We can't get into like more of the detail of this drum kit because I really like it. It's uh, Cameron. Need I say more? <laughs> That's <laughs> all right. Let's change the character of this drum a bit more. So this has a really good like kind of mixer session. It's a lot of presets to start with. Huh? This view? I wonder if we can change it. The memory interface. Reset window size. Uh, all right. I don't know. I'm used to it, I guess. Is that bigger? <laughs> like, is that doing its job? No, that's always. Oh, uh, for just this, the the bundle. Hey, they're they're trying to sell you microphones, man. Like it's all about this. It's all about do I want this overhead set? Oh, or how about this single overhead? Wow, yeah. Look at all the stuff it does. Wow. Which, I mean, they would probably be using. All things considered, I would say as minimal a setup as possible. Ah, funk. Cool. One thing I've have been doing is messing with the transients a bit. Although I don't want to now. I don't. I don't get too detailed. Do I want to model it completely? No. I'm glad we had that moment. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Sorry, I'm singing the song in my head. Don't break it. Don't break it. Right. Mm -mm. Just listen to me. You don't gotta be coy, Tomo. Alright. So like just go set it to loop and just let it let it be free. Just be free. Hmm. Uh, where are my lyrics at? Two, three, four, three, four. And then in the fourth bar, and set yourself free. Yeah, this is the chorus. So it's eight bars. And at the end of the last one, just drop off the key, Lee. Vim, vim, vim. And set yourself. Three. Uh, two, three. So we'll start with that fill that we kind of have. This fill. Copy that guy. Whoa. Dudes. One, two, three. And then back to the other beat. Right. I don't like how gross that sounds anymore. <laughs> I like the default drums. I want my default dad. We'll tweak it later. Whoa. And is there like a... Yeah. Cool. What is that? time Paul it doesn't say much about his break this whole thing repeats really yeah Where are the pardon Where are the, lines? the lines in this chart yeah. they're supposed to represent measures um kind of like the point in the song or like the point of the word that you're using to start the beat mm -hmm. so it's like the end of the bar. Just slip out the back. Jack three. Uh, or one, two, three, four. Jack four. So there's kind of an end. It doesn't really say much about the actual timing. Um, but before the next chord comes in, like it doesn't go up to B flat until plan is said. It's kind of how they write this. Um, it's pretty much like a fake sheet. Like it doesn't really tell you much information about the motion of the chords. Um, and what kind of voicings there are, but it gives you a fresh point of view. 
Uh, looking forever. Or looking forever. Please let me know which of those is correct. Thank you, uh, Beef Technical, for watching. And Temo, welcome back. I hope you are freshly cleaned, smelling, smelling good, the way that usernames smell good. <clears throat> but all things considered, let's see. So this is an AFAR kind of thing. Uh, does it mean? Does that mean just repeat it right away? Right. Cool. So there's a fill here and stuff. So I move you down eight bars. I move you up. Cool. And then where's my like bass? To C? No. B flat? I think an octave lower. Are you setting up? Cool. Most most basic baseline ever. <laughs> Just to hold it down. Uh, so I've been here's if you have one daring technique that you would like to learn from Jake, right ahead is to get rid of your get rid of your counting completely. If you're recording live, do not have a counting. Um, because what he'll do is he'll just hot punch everything, right? Um. Right. This kind of thing. Um, <laughs> this is the most uncomfortable thing of all time. <laughs> just gonna handicap ourselves. So that I just, you know, anyone could do this. Absolutely. Also, it makes me seem less bad because it's like, well, he does have to lean over. <laughs> right. And he's reading chat and staring at Paul Simon's crotch. It's all the same. This is not the right instrument at all. <laughs> Just, oh, I guess the good news is I can actually look at the music. Right? There's no chord changes there. Oh, how about, this is why I mapped that thing. Anyway, so, honestly, we didn't need to do that. But let's see how bad my timing was. MIDI, a great way to check your timing. The short answer is not bad, not great. Um, let's shrink it down. Everything's kind of aligned to fourths or quarter notes. I have a preset kind of in here to adjust my timing if I want to. If you press Control Shift Two, you can get this menu instead of it just quantizing. Um, this is, yeah, you can set the start and end note amount. So if I want to change it so that the ends of the notes snap to the next bar, then it'll do that. And it's only doing that halfway, versus if I made the grid larger, the quarter notes, and made it so that the end of the notes go to the next quarter note. Yeah, so that's like a thing, especially if you're into arpeggiation, it's actually pretty useful, because um, you want like something to hold out for that whole kind of thing. <laughs> Crunch. Uh, daring note placement on my fucking face. And this should be a little bit more. Yeah. Right? Whatever. <laughs> We're just gonna use that two bars or whatever that is. Four. We'll take that and then consolidate it. So it's its own thing, control J. And it just repeats and then ding ding ding. And then Yep. 
We could do the same thing that we're doing maybe with the drums, like where we take our velocity randomizer and kind of have it live in here. Give it a little bit of pump. It's, a, it's way easier, I guarantee it, to do it live than to try and tune this thing. Because this is neat for other effects. If you have like uh, a lot of velocity responsive kind of things, like filters and all that. Um, but otherwise, you know. Let's see. So then that plays, right? Let me just finish this arrangement and then I'll make it good tomorrow morning. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so let's see. Let's look at the lyrics real quick. So he does that twice. I guess there's another verse right here. Yep. Pop music. Amazing. So this whole section, basically from here to uh, here. Pretty much. It's just going to repeat. And that's like the whole song. Actually, the end of the song like fades out. Um, and we don't have to do the whole song. We're actually only going to do half of it. And there are other directions that I got from the director for tomorrow morning. Um, that'll kind of rearrange this a bit more. But, you know, I'll, uh, the, let's let our crazy cover play us out. Um, and, th you know, thank you guys for hanging out for a little help. We have a couple more shows coming up tonight. Of course, uh, Dog Tracks. If Atoric is out there, hit him up. Send him an email. Um, this is an ominous image. Actually, it kind of matches the background pretty well. Nice. Um, but if you guys have seen Atoric, um, let him know that we are totally doing the... We're doing the dog track. Uh, we are doing probably more music. There's always more music. Um, you know, I feel pretty good looking back at it, having it only been an hour and a half into the string. I can dig it. Um, I didn't get too much hype or well played or work in progress. Um, but hey. Thank you so much, Tomo, especially for liking us, because, you know, sometimes you have those days where you don't feel like... I'm not your counselor, but I play one on TV. I mean, Twitch. <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah, let's get up like a break thing, and I'll have this run, and see you soon. That was a little help. Hopefully it works.